All right, guys, uh, Jeff here. This is the start of a project that I'm going to be doing. This is my gas line coming into the house. It's a one and a half inch uh, iron pipe. Uh, and I'm going to be adding this section here, which is going to give me the opportunity to stub out a three quarter inch line to a uh, propane generator. I'm sorry, natural gas generator it also is propane, but this will be our natural gas feed. And then ultimately I'm going to uh, tie that in with a, a little uh, 50 amp uh, breaker into my electrical panel there. So I'll be able to back feed the generator from right here. I'm putting it on the other side of this block wall uh, just for a security standpoint. I don't want, uh, obviously somebody can still get in my backyard. I do have a wire for electrical fence. I've taken that down temporarily, but uh, that gives me the ability to uh, back feed this panel uh, from this, uh, generator and I have a Furman it's a 9500 watt electrical about a 7500 watt natural gas or propane uh, and that will help in an emergency provide power to the house if the power is out so what I have to do here is okay, add this section so I've got to go ahead and cut this pipe here uh, and uh, ultimately remove this section I'm going to replace it with this and then to get this line hooked back up I'm going to need to use that one and a half inch unit um, so that union will provide uh, the ability to hook into this line without having to disconnect or disrupt it any more than that. So now in preparation for this, I already have cut off the gas. I'm going to show you where I did that. And then also I thread uh, the line, thread my line using the, the fireplace, which is really just on the other side of that wall right there. I'm really, really confident that I'll be able to get into that line without any trouble. Um, I will take all the safety precautions that I can. Have an extinguisher right here uh, and ready to uh, put that out. Gas is off, so I shouldn't have any problem with that. Okay, I'm going to do about three wraps of this tape and pull it tight so you can start to see the threads coming out in that. And that usually does it there. Same thing, uh, spread a layer of this and smooth it with my finger. Okay, Let's get this one going. Okay, so now that I've got that pipe separated, I've got it pushed up just a little bit so I can get through, uh, get through this right here. And uh, I've got this pipe wrench on that coupling right there. And then I'll take the big boy on this one and just try to get that loose. I'm trying not to disturb any of the settings down the line. 
any of the other connections. Yeah, the bushing is going to go here. This piece I'm not going to need. This one I'm going to have to cut off a little bit more and this one thread once I get the length right. And then all that stuff that's coming out right there. Try to get as much of that out just so that doesn't blow its way down through any of the jets or pilot hole lights, stuff like that. So anyway, I'm going to start putting this back together using the pieces that we've already shown here. So I'm going to get the... Uh, Four inch nipple. Okay, so we got the pieces about ready to go. Wrapped it with some of that yellow pipe thread tape, and then I'm going to put a good amount of this uh, thread sealer on there. Um, I've always done both. I don't know about you, but I uh, I like the combination of the two. They seem to uh, do good together, having it coated. And I took a wire brush and brushed out uh, this the best I could just to make sure I got any of the old pipe thread out of there. And we'll get that started hopefully. Okay. All right. Uh, we're done with that. And we'll be putting our uh, valve on this. All right. Here, our shutoff valve here. And you see it's building up a ridge of that goop. All right. Yep. Probably got that. A little point out here today, so this uh, pipe's doing that. I'm going to put that in here. A little more even, a little bit jets. 100 and some degrees out here. Good day. At least I got the shade. And that was going to key there. I'm going to black lap this one. Come say hi to us. He keeps coming around the corner wondering what we're doing. And he's a little shy of power tools, so I uh, don't know that he'll actually come over, but he keeps around the corner. Probably here in the empty. Yeah, I can go probably do two more turns. Try to get this straight up. So if I can get that right, right there. I almost think I'd rather that be the other way. Right. That be, like right there. So it's not even with, in the on position, it's not sticking out into the space. So I'm going to bring this all the way around to right here. One more quarter turn. Okay, right there. So that gives us that. Let me shut that off. And then I've got another little nipple here with the cap. I don't, the cap's a little redundant right now. Um, the cap will be redundant because with the shutoff out there, but that, it, it's as much as so I don't get anything in it, in this pipe while I don't have anything connected. You know, I'm gonna put a quick connect on it so I can really quick wheel the natural gas generator into place and okay. then have a quick connect. But this will give it the, given the cap just gonna keep the debris or anything right. from it's on getting in it while it's not connected. And All right, now we'll move on here to the next uh, piece. So that's the idea. So I don't have the quick connect here right at the moment. This was step one was to get the space for it on the actual gas line, which we've shown is not that difficult of a task. And once we're done with this tonight, we'll do a quick bubble test as we test all the spots. And I'll go back to anyone that could have turned as I, as I put some pressure on this, especially those first couple of turns up and down, you know, those potentially, you know, I could have cracked the seal on them. So we'll have to see. I certainly hope not, but it always is a possibility. Okay. And that's about all I need to put on that. Again, this is very, very redundant right here. Uh, in fact, I don't, I don't know why I just, uh, again, with this, with that, this in that position, that, that is shut off and there shouldn't be any gas in that line at any time. But again, really, no, it's just sort of down there. This is more for just keeping debris out of that pipe. Since it is vertical like that, there's a good chance that there'd be some rain or whatever. So I don't, I don't need to put this on super tight. I'll put it on, I'm gonna put it on just like I would if I was putting together a connection, just, just to stay in habit. So it gets on there good if you can kind of see that. Yeah, that's, that's good. All right, so now I need to move to this part. I gotta get this union on. This part I gotta get threaded and uh, ready for connection. So uh, join me in just a minute.
Okay, so I've got that lined up to cut that union out of there. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Be right back to you. All right, guys, so I've got the uh, manual pipe threader on and I'm just uh, gonna crank a couple of times here. Put a little bit of that uh, pipe thread on there. And just keep that kind of lubricated as you go and uh, keep some pressure on it. It gets, it gets tough. That's why they give you this, you know, 30 inch long, uh, they give you this 30 inch long ratcheting bar because it, it definitely is needed. But you can look in there and see, you know, you can definitely see the starts of uh, grooves on the end of that pipe, the thread. So doing exactly what we want it to do. I'll come back as soon as I got some more done. And you can kind of see my technique is to put my foot there as the vise and then pull with both hands as we go up there. And then of course, just keep, uh, keep the pipe lubricant on there, the cutting oil on there. Take a breather. All right guys, uh, Jeff's just gonna give you the lowdown on this manual pipe threader. So you can see I've got that on an inch and a half uh, iron pipe for a gas line. Getting ready to put in a union that I had to do. And uh, anyway, this uh, set comes with uh, different dies for NPT. Um, clear up to two inches and down to, I believe that's three eighths. So maybe even smaller, yeah. 3 8, no, it's 3 8 half, 3 quarters. And so, anyway, the set comes with that in a nice box. Comes with a three piece handle, and it certainly does the job. As you can see, I'm having no problems uh, threading this. If you look down in there, you can see threads already forming on that uh, pipe. So, doing exactly what I wanted it to do. All right, guys, uh, Jeff here just going to give you a lowdown on this uh, little pipe thread. As you can see, it's a foaming lubricant and this just keeps those teeth on the threader going and it's got a nice little nozzle here to help you uh, get that where you need it to go but that goes on thick which is nice so it's a good cutting oil and as I work my way through this pipe you know let's see yep it just takes a lot a lot of strength but you're cutting through an inch and a half inch iron pipe and I can see the shavings and the threads working their way out but because of this uh, that pipe cutting oil that definitely keeps it lubricated and cutting makes it a lot easier okay guys uh, so what you're seeing here is I've got that uh, one and a half inch union ready to go I had to cut this pipe so I could make room for all of this i put a, a little stub out a three quarter inch shut off i'm going to be powering a natural gas generator right there so i had to cut this one and a half inch galvanized line and uh, put that basically right back there so i've got the um union ready to go but the way it works is you get these uh two pieces you thread on the collars and then it actually has a little seal uh right here in the middle and that seal um basically allows you to uh, put your uh, middle piece on. It also has a gasket, so it's a combination of two things. It basically allows you to put two lengths of uh, galvanized pipe together, um, you know, because you have, the way that the galvanized works is that you pretty much have, uh, you have, uh, you have to kind of go from one end to the next. You can't ever take them apart. So, and then of course you can't sweat them. Now I guess today's day they have the big compression tools, which uh, might make some of this obsolete because the compression coupling on this would do just fine too. So anyway, um, you put a little bit of that thread tape on there. It's got a gasket and a seal, but I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit of the uh, pipe thread dope on here, smear that around with my finger, get that all in all the way around it, front, back, and then uh, you basically just seal this thing, seal this thing up. So you slide that bigger, bigger nut on that, 
and as that goes on it will basically pull the two pieces together and you go till you get it obviously finger tight and then you got to get your big wrench on it and I might have to get the big one uh, this will be big enough but this is one and a half inch union one more turn might be better a lot of room in here do I between I'm not turning the whole thing so let me get my other pipe wrench on here where's my other wrench I've got it around here somewhere I got the there's the screw but you get the idea that's that's what we're after and I think what I'm gonna do is go ahead and get the uh, big guy out. Then before I turn the gas on, I'll go ahead and course and give this a, a big bubble test. But anyway, you get the idea of how the union works. Okay, so there we have uh, the finished product. We went ahead and intersected that gas line right there. We added that uh, nipple, the T, the uh, cutoff, the uh, I'm sorry, the gate valve there, the quarter turn gate valve, ball valve, uh, stubbed out with a cap, and then we had to come this side with a uh, another nipple, and we used our um, pipe threader to go ahead and put some pipes on that, and we capped this thing off with that one and a half inch union, and I'm uh, gonna get ready to clean it up, do a bubble test, and. Uh, get that pilot light lit back in my uh, hot water heater. But uh, that's well on its way to provide a natural gas for our generator. All right guys, so I turned the gas back on. I'm just gonna do real quick the spray test. I uh, hit these unions that I made just to look for any kind of bubbles. And so far so good. Again, this one, I've got that on a valve. So really now that's turned on there, but you know, again, this cap is kind of redundant, but I put the cap on more or less to keep any debris out of that neck right there until I get my pipe hooked up. Because obviously with this in that position, it's shut off and you can't get anything. So anyway, checking all that, looking for any kind of bubbles. As you know, natural gas doesn't run at a very high pressure. I mean, really less than 10, uh, upwards of three, five pounds of pressure. And these are all the ones I made. These are all the connections I made, and so I'm looking, I don't see any bubbles on any of those. So, looks like we're good. The only one, other one I'm worried about is over here in the corner. And I got some debris here that I get out of the way. So, let's see. That This right here is what I was kind of cranking on. And that's the one that's going into the house. So, it doesn't look like I cranked. I didn't think I did. I cranked on a little bit, but not enough to break that uh, seal. So anyway, it looks like we're good. I've got to go light the pilot light in the hot water heater. And that's the only thing we have in natural gas that flows constantly. Everything else is electronic. So I'm going to go light that. Uh, should be good to go. But we are ready. That's by and large. That's what we were looking for was just a real quick connect uh, to be able to supply natural gas to our it's a three-way a, a three fuel tri-fuel uh, generator so that Furman I'm converting it from propane to propane and natural gas and then of course we'll also run on gas but ideally I can run it off of just the two LPs or the N, uh, uh, NGs so anyway that's the plan